Hello, I think at this point, until I make some more, <laughs> this is the last video in this section about arrays of objects. And one of the things that comes up a lot, uh, especially when you're first learning to code, um, is uh, it, with P5 and doing graphics and animations, everything I've been doing pretty much in all of these videos has just been with shapes. And so as you can see here, here is one of the examples, arrays of objects, where when I click on, the, click on them, they change color. This was one of my previous videos. What I want to look at is what would it take to have each one of these circles, each one of these objects display instead of a shape, an image, a JPEG or a PNG that I load, a file that I load, and how could I have the same object? So how could I make a bubble class where each bubble displays an image, but each bubble displays a different image? So the first thing I'm going to do is just change all of these into flowers. Okay, so I have a directory. I'm, I have a directory of images associated with this project. Um, let me go over to my code, and it looks like this. It has a bunch. It has one uh, image, image in it called flower.png, and it has a bunch of other images called kitten.jpg. The reason why I'm making this distinction is PNG is a format for images that allows for transparent pixels, and that's something that you're probably going to find very useful when designing and using images in your code. That you can have an image not just be that sort of like rectangular thing, but rather have part of the image be. Um, uh, transparent. So, okay. So let's first, I'm going to, one of the things, if I want to load an image into P5, there are a variety of ways to do it, and I'm sure I have other videos in the future, even though I'm in the future, but I made it in the past, but they're further ahead in this playlist, um, where I look at this more specifically. But a quick way to load media, it seems a little bit silly, like, oh, there's a preload function? Setup is the function where all the code at the beginning runs. Well, I want to load images at the beginning to use. I should use those in setup. But there's a funny way about JavaScript, the way that it loads uh, media files and large data files, is that um, it, it, um, those, <laughs> it can certainly take a while for those things to load. <laughs> so the preload function is a way of saying, I'm going to have a variable. I'm going to call it flower. And in preload, I'm going to say flower equals load image flower.png, and uh, this could be double quotes or single quotes. They mean the same thing. I'm kind of like, I like single quotes these days. So this right here is saying, hey, I know you're about to set up the P5 sketch. <laughs> Before you do that, I want to have a pre-setup to the setup where I want to load this image. So this will guarantee that the flower image is ready to be used by the time you get to setup. Now, the rest of our work is really as simple as if I have this image, that data from that PNG file stored in this variable flower, I can just go all the way down to my bubble object and look here. This is where I draw the, draw the bubble as a circle. So I can just get rid of all of this code and I can just change and use this function called image. So there's a function in P5 called image which says, hey, I want to draw an image to the screen. Just like I want to draw an ellipse at this.x, this.y, now I want to draw an image at this.x, this.y. So now, all I've done is load that image in preload in a global variable, and then draw that image here in the show function. So let's refresh, and <laughs> okay, so what is this error? File not found. I forgot that I put the images in this directory called kittens. So I need to make sure I reference that directory. Now note, I also need this directory to be part of the same directory where my index.html and sketch.js stuff is. So there can be some nuance here into where you store your, your image files. But in this case, um, I just need to make sure I include the folder name kittens slash flower.png. And now if I do this, we can see, look, there, my bubbles are flowers. Yay! Now, they aren't different sizes. Um, and so if I wanted to, I could you know, kind of go a little farther with this and I could use this variable r and I could give, make that the width and height of the image. So one thing to realize here, I'm looking over there to see if I can use my whiteboard, which I'm about to, but I have to go erase it first. So when I drew a circle, when I use the ellipse function, and I, I have this variable called this.r, I actually assign that, it's pretty poorly named because it's, it's assigned to the diameter of the circle. A rectangle or a square, which is a rectangle with equal sides, um, if I have the x, y here, 
this is its width, and this is its height. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because the image function, I switched from ellipse to image, but it would be almost a better example if I were switching from rectangle, which requires an x, a y, a width, and a height, if I were switching from rectangle to image, which also requires an x, a y, a width, and a height, the only difference is fill that rectangle with the pixels from some actual image, like flower. So this is really what's going on. So I can manipulate the size and that sort of thing. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, and I'm just going to leave it. Um, I'm going to just simplify this example. Uh, but I, let's just show it to you with R in there. You can see now they're all different sizes. Ha, I'll leave that in there. Why not? OK. Um, all right, so now, what if what I want to do is click on these and have them change, transform from a beautiful flower to a bu butterfly? Because we all know butterflies transform. OK, I have kittens. To a kitten. Oh, I have a kittens. Um, so, OK, so I do have this clicked function, changes the brightness. Let's just first make this work. Let's back up a second. And what I want to do now is I want to, instead of having each image be the, each bubble object be the same image, I want to uh, pick a, an image of a kitten. So I'm now going to add an array called kittens. And what I'm going to do is in preload, I'm going to say kittens index 0 equals load image kittens kitten 0.jpg. So you can see here, right, I could do this, right, I got, and I had five of them. So here's the thing. This is pretty horrible. What I want to be able to do is there, if I have a whole bunch of images and they're named in some consistent way, um, what I actually want to do is could I write a loop to load all of these? So instead of having three images loaded into an array, 0, 1, and 2, could I write a loop? And one thing that's interesting is I can do this very easily with something called string concatenation. <laughs> nice excuse to bring that up in here. So uh, as you might know, 2 plus 2 equals 4. However, a plus b equals the string ab, or cow plus bell <laughs> equals cowbell. So when you use the plus operator with text, it joins the text rather than the plus operator with numbers adding the numbers. And the reason why this is so useful is what I can do here is I can write a loop for let i equal 0, i is less than how many kitten images do I have? I think I had 5. I can see them here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, I had 5. 5, i plus plus. Then I can just take this line of code, put it here, and I can say kittens index i equals load image kitten. Now I don't want to load the zero kitten into each one. Well, I could do that now for just testing, but I'm going to keep moving on. I want to load this plus, oh, and there's a new way to do this. <laughs> there's a new way to do this in ES6. I'll come back to that at the end of this video if you're interested. Because this is the, the old way that I, um, I can add the i in between. I can say take this string, kitten slash kitten, join it with the value of i, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then add dot jpeg to the end. And that will load all of those image files into kittens. Now, let's just make sure this works by going down here and saying something like kittens index 0. That's kitten 0. Let's take a look at kittens index 3. That's kittens index 3. Look at that little kitten. Um, OK, so now, how do I have each object have a reference to a different kitten? <laughs> Very important. So one thing that I think that I want to have, I'm going to get rid of this brightness thing. This brightness was from a previous example. What I want to do is have an image associated with each bubble object. So why not say this.image equals, or this.kitten equals what? Image. So when I make a bubble, I want to say, I want a bubble to be at this x location and this y location with this size, and I want it to use this particular image. So what that means is I need to now, up here, I need to pick one of these images. Now, the, the, let's say I want to pick a random one. The nice thing is, if you have an array, 
in P5, I can just say kitten equals random kittens. This random function, if I give the random function an array, it will pull out a random element from that array, which is one of those random kitten images, and put it in this variable. And then I can pass that in. So this is me picking a random image, then passing it into the object, and then the object receiving it and putting it in as a property. And then what's the last step? I need to make sure I draw that particular kitten. Uh, image. All right, let's see what we got here. Yay, look, lots of random kittens. Now, it's hard to see them because they're so small. So let's make these kittens bigger. There we go. So you can see, yay, I have a bunch of kitten objects. And I could I do the thing where I click and I add new ones or I delete them. But let's have all of these kittens, every time I click, change to a new kitten. <laughs> so we already had this whole clicked function, and I'm saying if d is less than this dot r, why not just say this dot image, this dot kitten is a new random kitten. So we can see I could always at any moment pick a new image to store into that bubble object's image variable. And so now, oh, and this is bad though. This, this is for checking <laughs> that function, that, that this math that I had left over from before is checking to see if the mouse clicks inside of a circle. And since the image is actually a rectangle, hmm, why don't we make those <laughs> back to flowers? Because the nice thing about the flower is it was kind of like circular thing inside, whatever. But I could change this code. I could change this code to say, um, if px is greater than this dot x and px is less than this dot x plus this dot r and py is greater than this dot y and py is, is less than this dot y plus this dot r, right? What is all this crazy mumbo jumbo that I just put in there? What I'm, at, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say, hey, there's a point. It's clicked. Is it in between this x? Oh, you can't see that. This x, and this is this location is x plus r, and the y is between this y, and this location is y plus r. So I'm checking to see if the x and y of the mouse is within those boundaries. And once I've done that, we should. Yay, look. I can just keep making different kittens. Yay, it's not a square. It is a square. It is a square. It's not a square. I don't know. Um, so I've done something goofy here where I'm just, you can clean this up and try it different ways. And what if I make it a flower and there's a circle better to check? Um, maybe I could just change it when I click to uh, flower. So these kittens are changing into flowers when I click on them. And then if I click on them again, oh, they still are a flower. So you can see the range of possibilities. You could also make the argument here that maybe this whole picking the random kitten here and passing it in was kind of unnecessary because what I could have just done is right down in here, I could have just picked the random, uh, the random thing in the constructor, and that's also the same thing. So there's lots of different ways of organizing the code depending on what you're trying to do. And generally speaking, I don't love the fact that I'm using flower here or kittens here because these are variables that exist outside the scope of the class. And the class, if it's going to know about things outside of its scope, should probably receive them as uh, parameters to a function. But that's neither here nor there. It's worked. Wait, there's a bonus here at the end of this video. I don't know why I'm looking around as if someone's going to catch me. Um, I forgot. I, I should probably make a video just about this. But while we're here, there's also a new way. Look at this. And I was told, by the way, I was just given some nice uh, in advice about I shouldn't really be using the word join because that's kind of used another. But this is string concatenation. Kitten slash kitten plus concatenate with the value of i plus concatenate with dot jpeg. But there's a new way to create strings from actual characters and variables in JavaScript. And it's something called template literals. And this is in lots of other languages, but this is a new way to do it in JavaScript. And it involves the use of the backtick. 
So if I put back tick here and back tick here, get rid of this, get rid of this. Now I don't want the pluses anymore. So this, this is just like a string. It's a literal string. Ah, literal. This is a literal string. Kitten slash kitten dot JPEG. But if I want to use a variable in there, why, why we're calling this a template literal, I can put a variable in there with curly brackets and dollar sign and then the name of that variable. Hopefully I'm getting this right. So this is a way of saying, hey, I want to have the string, instead of having to use plus for drawing. And the nice thing about this, I'm pretty sure it lets you do this over multiple lines too, which is really, really nice, because with regular quotes, you can't have multiple lines, line breaks. So this should work exactly the same way. Template literal. Ah, <laughs> so close. Um, what did I get wrong? Uh, I made a mistake, because by the way, I don't actually know what I'm doing at all. It looks like this. The dollar sign, I knew it should have syntax highlighted that in some way. The dollar sign is an indication like, hold on a second, I'm going to use a template literal. And so now it's saying what's inside of here is the variable name. And we can see the syntax highlighting fixed, which is good. There we go, now this is working, and it's the same exact program. I should mention, well, what if I really wanted to have so one thing, if I just had like dollar sign in the string, it's not going to think it's part of this unless the curly brackets are there. And so if I really wanted it to be this, I could probably like use an escape sequence or something. But it's pretty rare that you're actually going to want to have this sequence of characters in your string. Okay, so that's a little extra bonus piece at the end of this video. Maybe I'll make a special video just all about the wonder of template literals because that's what I'm sure everybody on the internet wants to watch. And I'll see you in the future.